what's up and welcome back to interpreting stars where today we're bringing it back to our chucky marathon of films with seed of chucky now remember this is my first experience with the series overall i'm not a fanboy this is not a rewatch i'm going in completely blind with all of these movies so stick around for that if you see my reviews for child's play child's play 2 child's play 3 bride of chucky you know that i'm not a huge fan of the child's play movies while i did actually like Bride of Chucky because it finally realized what it was and embraced the ridiculousness of it and it was just hilarious. So from that point forward, I was actually looking forward to all of these Chucky movies. And how is Seed of Chucky? Well, it's okay. It's not as good as Bride of Chucky is. It's still self-aware in what it's trying to do, but it has some very much glaringly huge plot holes in the film. First, what's it about? It's about Chucky and Tiffany. They are back and they are better than ever because they are in the real world. This is a meta film. It takes place in our world where Hollywood is still in the process of making other Chucky movies. And Chucky and Tiffany, they are just dolls. They are just props in a film production. But then when a real life living ventriloquist doll on the other side of the country realizes that Chucky and Tiffany might be his relatives, he makes a trip over to Hollywood and he makes them live with voodoo and suddenly they are back at it. Once they are alive, it is of course the same exact motivation, same story, same everything as the other Chucky movies and they want to leave their doll bodies and go into human bodies except this time around it's human bodies from Hollywood and blah 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 blah. First of all, bravo, brava if you will on making this meta because I love meta movies especially when it comes out to horror films because it makes it that more realistic. Usually speaking, one of my favorite horror films that's meta is New Nightmare which was part of the Nightmare on Elm Street series same basic thing, it's on a Hollywood set where the real Freddy Krueger that the Freddy Krueger is based off of attacks the people on the set. I always thought that was a brilliant, brilliant movie and I loved every second of it even though it doesn't fit within the same universe that was already established. So if it is done right, meta can be absolutely brilliant, it can be unique, it can be different but you can easily find yourself in a bunch of plot holes, and that's what you find yourself in in Seed of Chucky. With Seed of Chucky, I had a hard time distinguishing between what it wanted to be. Did it want to be a continuation of the series thus far, or did it want to be its own thing in a meta universe? The problem is, it's both, because that child is obviously a shout out to the end of Bride of Chucky when Chucky and Tiffany had a child. But the problem with that is that happened in a movie in a production in the middle of Hollywood. So why does this character, why does this character actually exist if it was all part of a movie in this meta universe? That's problem A. What they needed to have in that area is some kind of exposition introduction scene where they have this character walk out of a movie screen into the real world and that way, so when he runs into the props of Chucky and Tiffany, he can wake them up. They needed something. They needed him to be some kind of magical creature that came from the universe of films into the real world. They needed some kind of connection there, but they didn't have it in this movie. So you're kind of confused as to how this is supposed to be a continuation of the series because it feels like it's trying to be. Another example is when Tiffany's being like, I'm going to stop murdering people. I'm going to be a good girl and she goes through the 12 steps of addiction, which of course is funny, and then she starts calling up people who she's wronged, so the families of the people she's killed. Only problem there is, she killed them again in a movie that doesn't actually exist, that never happened, so how comes the person on the other end of the line is upset and is tormented? Did the stuff in the movies happen or didn't it? because that's what this movie is most confusing with. And again, using meta in a film is very, very difficult to get perfectly. It doesn't always do it right. Another example of when a movie didn't do it exactly right is in Amityville Awakening. That was a meta film where it took place in the real world where the other Amityville movies happened, but they didn't get the house right. Another problem with that movie, by the way, is the character had no idea that the Amityville horror films existed, and come on. There was always an element of the film that you could never get sucked into if you know enough about the history, if you know enough about the story there. But I'm getting off topic. The idea here is that meta isn't always perfect. It's not always a give and take black and white scenario. You have to think about it from beginning to end. You have to think about the intricate little facts here and there that makes up what meta means. 
Even if it's something self-aware and ridiculous like Seed of Chucky, it needed that connection so that you're not disconnected with the story as a whole. And I was kind of disconnected with this story. And that's actually my major complaint with this movie. There's other things here that I didn't really like, like visuals. The very opening of this movie was terrible, terrible CGI. It's the only part in the movie that I really noticed any CGI at all because it was terrible. At first I was like, oh, it's okay, it's an old movie, and then I'm like, it's 2004, the CGI should be okay. And the editing, I was never a fan of the editing in this movie, it felt like an intern showed up at Hollywood and they wanted to show their stuff but they didn't know too much about editing, so it doesn't really turn out that great. Either that or a really old geezer who has edited so many movies he no longer cares how it looks. So the editing stood out to me as bad, but really those were the only things that really honestly stood out to me as terrible. There's a lot of stuff that could have been done better, but for the most part this movie does an okay job still maintaining that level of self-aware humor. The concept alone of being meta still works even though it has some glaring problems associated with it. The Chucky doll is fantastic, the Tiffany doll is fantastic, even though once again Tiffany kind of backstabbed Chucky at the end of Bride of Chucky, so I'm not entirely sure why she's still there helping him out. It makes no sense to me, but then again, I'm going to ignore it because it is meta. The character of Glenn, I was unsure of because I saw photos of him before I saw the movie, and I was like, that looks stupid. It's a different kind of doll than Chucky and Tiffany, but once again, it is meta, so I'm not going to complain too much about it. It is, however, a creepy looking doll, and that's perfect for the tone that the film is trying to convey. Once again, the story motivation is exactly the same as Child's Play 1, 2, 3, and Bride of Chucky. I am going to stop complaining about that right now. I've been saying it from basically the beginning that the Chucky doll needs a new outlet. He needs to be trying to do something other than trying to escape his doll form. I get it, you don't like it, but once you don't like it, what are you gonna do? Continue to find different ways to escape your body. I get it, and you know what, it's fine. And I'm gonna stop complaining about that right now. I mean, it's just the way it is. That's apparently how it's always going to be. If he changes the way that he does things, if he changes what he's going after, then great. Finally, fantastic. If he doesn't, then it is what it is. One thing that I really enjoyed about this movie was a bunch of cameos that show up in the film. Not only just Jennifer Tilly, she's not exactly a cameo, she's a main character, but you have Britney Spears that showed up in one sequence and I was like, <laughs> That's perfect. In today's day and age, if they made this movie now, it probably would have been somebody like Miley Cyrus or Justin Bieber or somebody like that. That's one of the great things about Meadow, especially when it comes down to Hollywood specific. There is so much potential you can throw into a meta film that takes place in our own world that helps make it stand out as self-aware in its humor. It's just not as good of a movie as I think Bride of Chucky was. Bride of Chucky was a little bit more concise. It was a little bit more simplistic. It was a little bit more straightforward, if you will. While this movie was kind of all over the place for no apparent reason other than it's meta so we can throw a bunch of stuff here and there at you and you're like, you don't have to. You know, it's just, it's still a movie. Be a movie. So my score for Bride of Chucky was 79%. I'm telling you that right now so you can kind of get an idea of how far we're Worse, I consider this movie, which is at 66%. Technically speaking, I still have this at second place in the Chucky franchise as a whole. It's still above all the other Child's Play movies, in my opinion. It's just not all it could have been. Guys, tell me what you thought of Seed of Chucky in the comments down below. And as for YouTube, you know what to do. Subscribe to me, hit that like button, hit the bell to be notified when I come out with my next review. And until then, peace out.